So the comment section of my videos can get a little bit, let's just say, spicy sometimes. Typically it's about how shit a pilot I am, and I am the first to admit that I am actually not that great a pilot. And I do mention this in videos up front for fun. Now let me be clear, I'm still a beginner in this, so I am not that great at freestyle. As a non-racer and a pretty bad freestyle pilot, here's my opinion. As a non-racer and a non-pro freestyle pilot, don't take my shitty flying as a limitation of the quad. Just to ensure that there is no confusion in the future, I have gone and made myself one of these, which is a caution ship pilot, high-vis vest, got giant one on the back there as well, just so that nobody mistakes me for trying to be a professional. However, these comments are fine. You're not telling me something that I don't already know. This isn't what I'm addressing in this video today. Say what you like about my flying, but questioning the honesty and integrity of my builds, that's where I have to draw the line. So I guess you want to see the comment. In this video, we're going to take each part of that comment, see if the commenter is actually correct, and I'm lying about things being sub 250 grams when they're not, or maybe they're just misinformed. As a disclaimer, whenever I show this comment, I've redacted the commenter's name. I don't mean them any ill will. This is a little bit of fun, but I do just want to make sure that I set the record straight so that this comment doesn't go unanswered and it looks like I'm avoiding the question. Let's do a quick analysis of each part of this comment. Number one, your weigh scale is so wrong. And if that's true, that means that all of the other builds that I've done that are sub 250 are also wrong. So let's hope that's not the case. The Tattoo 650 is 82 grams, and this is right from Tattoo's website. And if this is correct, that means that my scale is probably wrong, which means that the whole build weight is probably wrong and everything else that I've built is wrong. And number three, I have the same build and the only way to get sub 250 is to use an AIO board or the new Tattoo 750 and 650 slimline lipos. And I want to find out whether this is actually true or not, because there's a lot to unpack in this. And number four, add those, the frame and the battery together and bang, 255 grams. That is not sub 250. In that calculation, yes, that is not sub 250, but that relies on everything else in your comment being correct. Originally, I was going to respond to this comment directly in the comment section, and I thought, hang on a second, what if this guy is actually right? What if my scale and measurements have all been off all of this time and everything that I've built so far has been completely wrong? Well, there's only one way to find out, so let's get into it. Number one, your weigh scale is so wrong. So let's take a look at the scale. Okay, it turns on, it turns off, so it seems to be working, but that doesn't mean that it's accurate. So I ordered another scale. This one is completely brand new. And what I'm gonna do here is compare the weight of my older O3 version of the Quad Mueller Jin F25 on both scales, just to see if they have a different reading. I'm using the old one here so I don't spoil the big reveal of what the O4 version looks like from my last build video. If you do wanna just see what the ending is, then I'll leave a timestamp below so you can just jump ahead. Okay, so let's get this O3 version on the scale. And that comes to 172 grams. And uh, okay, so let's put this onto the new scale and see what the new scale reads. And that is 171.7. And it's basically the same, but I can already hear what you're saying next. What if both of those scales are inaccurate to exactly the same amount? It's highly unlikely, but it is possible. So I looked at buying 20 other scales at different price points and different brands. But A, I don't think this is gonna appease people because however unlikely, all 20 of those scales could be completely inaccurate to the same level as each other. Therefore, it proves nothing. And B, buying 20 scales is a lot of money to spend on stuff that I'm probably not gonna have any use for in the future. So what else can we do? I reached out to the MIT Quantum and Precision Measurement Group to see if they developed some kind of ultra accurate piece of technology. However, at the time of making this video, they still hadn't gotten back to me yet. So I've instead settled for these. I bought a set of precision calibration weights. These weights are highly accurate and use the calibrating scales that require more accuracy than what I need for FPV. So what I'm going to do here is select the 50 gram weight here and place this on the scale and see what it says. And it's 50 grams. So um, I'm actually going to check this on the other scale as well, just to see what it says on here. And it's 50 grams too. So let's 
put that back and we're going to take the 10 gram weight this time because uh, I want to see if it's accurate at a smaller weight too. And that says 10 grams. So let's try this on the other scale as well. And that also says 10 grams. So this now tells me that the scale is accurate, but let's move on to the second part of the comment because this is where it gets interesting. The Tattoo 650 battery is 82 grams and this is exactly what is stated on Tattoo's website. And yeah, he's right. I've checked the website, it says 82 grams. I've done more than that. I've checked other websites too and they've all said 82 grams. However, I do want to point out anyone experienced in building FPV quads, especially when there's a weight limit, knows that the manufacturer stated weights aren't always completely accurate. So when you're building something sub 250, as much as you can plan for those components to come in at a specific weight, that magic number of 249 grams, sometimes that just doesn't work out in the way that you intended. As an example, when I built my Quad Mula Siren F35 for one of my other build videos, I knew that I was gonna get it sub 250, I just hadn't expected that it would come in at 230 grams. So when building to weight, you always have to put in a tolerance to the manufacturer stated weights because it's not always accurate. Okay, so let's put the battery on the scale. This is the R-Line 650 milliamp hour 4S. 95c battery that's in question that this guy thinks is 82 grams and we get 73 74 grams just to make sure that it's not just a one-off i'm going to use another one exactly the same battery and that is about 74 grams what i'm also going to do so nobody gets upset is i'm going to use the new scale just to check the weight as well and that is 73.9 so it's about 74 and we're going to take the other one and that is 74.5 so it's like you know a little bit heavier but not not 82 grams point two is busted these batteries do not weigh 82 grams but let's move on to point three i have the same build and the only way to get it sub 250 is to use an aio board or use the new Tattoo Slimline battery. So there's a lot to unpack here. Okay, so the components that I use for a sub 250 build are chosen very specifically because of weight and performance. So my question for the original commenter is, do you really have the same build? Are you using the same stack? Are you using the same motors? Are you using everything that I've used in my build and you're still not getting it sub 250? Because if you're using something else, that can make a huge difference in weight. Regardless, let's just say for argument's sake that this build is 255 grams. And don't worry, I will weigh everything again in a moment. You still don't need to use an AIO to get this sub 250. And let me explain. Sometimes I get to the end of the build and I have to shave off some extra weight in order to hit that magic number. And I've got pretty good at weight saving by doing certain things. Now for this build, I used everything that came with the frame. I didn't use any of the weight saving things that I'm going to go through in just a second but these are worth knowing if you have an issue and this works on every other build as well. The first thing is usually the TPU. Do you really need all of that TPU on the quad? For this one I would suggest yes you probably do but if you do can you make it lighter either by redesigning whatever that mount or protection looks like or using a different type of TPU. If you've seen my other videos, you may have realized that I usually use this bright yellow stuff from Recreus. It is much lighter weight than normal TPU. It's also very flexible, so it absorbs a lot of bumps and crashes. And as an added bonus, it also glows bright in UV light. But back to the point, changing this can save a few grams as well. In some of my other build videos, in order to get the weight down, you'll see that I'm using titanium hardware. I haven't had to do that for this build, but it does save you a lot of grams without compromising on the strength of the quad. Now, I don't suggest that everyone do this to every quad. It is expensive to do this and finding some of those titanium bolts is pretty difficult, but it's worth it if you absolutely need that weight saving. I also save a gram or two by using lightweight battery straps. Again, I haven't had to do that for this build, but it's good to know that you can do this too. Also make sure that I cut down my wires to fit perfectly for each build so it saves as much weight as possible. My point here is you don't need to use an AIO to get this sub 250. You can find other ways if you want to use a stack. Just be careful on the stack and motors that you choose because they're not all that lightweight. So that's point three of the comment, busted. Add those, the frame and the battery together and bang, 
255 grams. This is not sub 250. I will caveat this with, I've been flying this around quite a lot, so it's full of grass and mud, so it might vary in weight slightly from the original video. But from the process that we've been through today, we now know that the scale is accurate. We've tested this against another scale and with calibration weight. The battery does not weigh 82 grams as stated by the manufacturer. It is actually 74 grams. And therefore, when I put the quad and the battery on the scale, it comes to 247 grams. But we'll check this on the other scale as well, which is 247.6 grams. It is still sub 250. I've personally selected this video for you to watch next. But if you want to see the build video of the quad that we were talking about today, I've put the full build video up here for you.